My name is Emily Pfeiffer. Um, I'm the new plant pathologist specializing in vegetables and tobacco here at UK and I started in April um, and so I'm very glad to be here. Um, and Sean's presentation was a really excellent lead-in to mine because I focus quite a bit on the integrated pest management pyramid um, and so by the end of this presentation, I hope that you're well acquainted with that and you can, you can help your gardeners along their way to applying it in their home gardens. Um, and so I'm going to be focusing on sustainable disease management in the vegetable garden. And this first section um, for, the, for the recording this morning is an overview of that integrated pest management pyramid. And so if you've never seen the integrated pest management pyramid of tactics, um, here it is. Um, the basis of this pyramid is prevention, which, which Sean touched on. Um, the next level is cultural and sanitation methods. Above that is physical and mechanical methods, biological, and then the very tip is the chemical methods. And so whether I'm speaking with a commercial grower or a home gardener, um, I really I focus on integrated pest management for the most effective management of diseases. And whether this is a conventional grower, someone who's kind of in the middle between organic approaches and conventional approaches, or straight organic, if you build in these, these, these primary levels of disease management, the chemical management um, is much more effective. And so um, whether it's conventional or organic, they can apply these tactics um, to, build in, to build in lower disease pressure. And then the chemicals are really the only different part in terms of disease management. Um, so preventative disease management involves things like cropping sequences or for commercial growers this is crop rotations. Um, and so this is rotating away f in for a particular area in the garden. It's rotating away from the plant family for two to three years. Um, another critical part is variety selection. And so growers, want, growers and gardeners want to be choosing horticulturally desirable plants, but it's, it's really important, especially in the home garden, that they choose resistant plants. And plants with resistance to the common diseases that we see each year in Kentucky. Um, on, on seed source websites, the disease reaction is, is generally listed along with different varieties. Um, you can see here this pink girl tomato has intermediate resistance to alternaria, fusarium, and verticillium wilt, as well as gray leaf spot. Um, and so it's important, especially for home gardeners, to be choosing resistant varieties to some of the common diseases that we see. Moving up the pyramid, um, I'll talk next about some cultural and sanitation methods. Being clean is very, very important. And what's different about home gardeners as opposed to conventional, or as, as opposed to commercial growers, um, is that home gardeners typically have more time and, and they enjoy working in the garden. And so some of these cultural management cleanliness <coughs> techniques um, can be very effective for them. And so these gardeners want to be using certified pathogen free or heat treated seed. Um, they want to start with clean planting material and clean tools. Um, if tools are dirty, boots are dirty, um, it's best to wash them with water and then go back in with 10% bleach. 10% bleach is inactivated by soil and so you need to remove as much soil as possible and then the bleach um, will actually kill the microbes that are on those tools or boots. Um, and then finally remove debris in season and then deep till anything that's left over. That deep tillage will help break down any remaining pathogens that can potentially overwinter in the garden. Um, moving up the pyramid, next I will talk about mechanical and physical methods. Um, and so these, these controls are designed around creating an unfavorable environment for disease to develop. Um, and so these are things like maximizing air movement around plants. And so Sean mentioned altering plant spacing. Um, the less those leaves are wet in the garden, the fewer diseases um, will, will come into the garden. 
Um, in addition, manage those weeds and volunteers. Not only do they compete with the garden plants for resources, but they can also harbor different pathogens. In particular, viruses and bacteria can hang out on weeds, um, or weeds can function as what we call green bridges. And so they can, they can hop from one infected tomato plant, the pathogens can hop from one infected tomato plant onto the weed, and then onto the tomato plant that may be in the next row. Um, and so that's what we, that's, that's what a green bridge is. Um, in addition, adequate soil drainage. You can, you can improve soil drainage by using some raised bed um, planting boxes. Good soil tilt. Soil is very important for organic management. Um, really building up, the, building up the population of beneficial microbes in the garden those beneficial microbes can fight against the pathogenic microbes um, that, that can occur in the garden. And then, and I saw Rick just came in, um, and he'll talk a little bit more about floating row cover for insect management. That's a really good physical tool that gardeners can use to reduce insect pressure. And then also mulch to reduce <coughs> soil contact with leaves. I can't emphasize enough the minimization of soil contact with the above ground plant parts. Moving right along. Um, the next level is biological controls. And so if you're not familiar with biological controls or biocontrols, this is basically using the good microbes to fight against the bad microbes in the garden. Um, and so this is natural biological competitors, parasites, or antagonists to manage pests or pathogens. Um, and so what a gardener would be looking for are things like microbial inoculants. Um, typically these are applied to soils, anything that's available to the home gardener. Um, those inoculants will be applied to soils. Um, and these can be things like bacteria, fungi, or actinomyces. And in this picture, um, this is a picture of trichoderma, which is a fungus attacking another fungus, fun fungal-like organism. I think this is Epithium um, hypha. And so you can see the trichoderma is actually parasitizing that Pythium root, um, that, that Pythium hypha. Um, so it's a fungus fighting another fungus. And so at the very top are our chemical methods. Um, and so chemical disease management in the home garden. Um, home gardeners have access to many of the same tools that commercial growers have access to. Um, fixed copper and sulfur dust are really the mainstays of organic production. Um, both of those are general purpose fungicides. Copper is effective generally on bacterial diseases. Um, chlorothalonil and mancozeb are, are other general purpose fungicides, but those should not be used um, in gardens that, that are taking an organic approach. Um, hydrogen dioxide can be effective against some bacterial diseases. Um, it's not particularly effective against fungal diseases. And then phosphorus acid is really our only um, option in terms of systemic activity against um, particularly the water mold pathogens. And so these are things like downy mildew or Phytophthora pythium. Um, and so home gardeners increasingly take advantage of some of these other some of these other chemical management methods. And so these are things like horticultural oils and those provide a physical barrier against spore infiltration of the leaf. Um, horticultural oils tend to be more effective on the obligate fungal pathogens. Um, so the pathogens that cause powdery mildews or rusts. Um, and so here again is our integrated pest management pyramid of tactics. And I didn't, I didn't emphasize before, but the emphasis is on these non-toxic levels of management um, in order to set yourself up for success once it comes time to use chemical management. And so this, I, I teach this to home gardeners, I teach this to commercial growers. Basically covering these, these fundamental levels of management um, sets them out, sets themselves up for success when they go to use the chemicals because the chemicals are more effective if these lower levels are covered. In addition, it's, it's, it's more environmentally friendly to be using 
to be using these fundamental levels of management um, because toxicity generally increases as you travel up the IPM pyramid.